There's more than 1.2 billion people under the age of 30 living in the Commonwealth. From all corners of the world, young people are descending on Apia to raise their voices and have their say. We've talked about resilience and youth empowerment and sustainable development, and I want to take an opportunity to explore how we can take those ideas even further. The Youth Forum is bringing some of the Commonwealth's best young leaders together to talk about the big ideas shaping their futures. The outcome of these discussions? A signed declaration with 51 demands for their governments addressing everything from climate change to artificial intelligence. The beauty of the Commonwealth is having young people who are also from the UK, who are also from Australia, who are also from Canada, and I ask them to hold their governments accountable. We sat down with the organization's outgoing chairman, Kim Allen from PNG. So the main role and the function of the CYC, in short, is to represent young people at the highest level of decision making, uh, to bring youth voices from the community, from every across sector, to, to bring them up to the governments, heads of government, and say, these are the visions, the dreams, the hopes of young people. Welcome. We are here in the Pacific with shared values, hope for the future. When you talk to Pacific young people across the region, what are some of the issues that they're saying that they need the CYC or the Commonwealth to address further? Employment is a, is a big issue in, in the region. Job security, scarcity, it's an issue, an issue in our region. Of course, uh, climate change, political participation. How can young, uh, young people participate in decision making? Because that's where they make their voices heard. They just want access to education. They just want to have a job. They just want to create something for themselves so that they can help their, themselves and, of course, their families and their community. We see a lot of young people now, especially across the Pacific, talking about the damage colonization has done to the region. So. Is the Commonwealth still relevant today? Yeah, it is relevant. We live in a global community. It is relevant and this international community is as, as similar like the Commonwealth or the, the UN. They're relevant in, in the sense that we come together as a global community. But what's important is navigating our own future. And that, that is the theme of the Commonwealth Youth Forum. Navigating our course, building resilience for a common future. I'm going to tell a story. When I was a kid, I, I used to sail on this uh, sailing canoe to school. And when we used to sail, everyone has a role in there. There is the steerman, there is a captain, the one who pulls the string, uh, the trigger man, and then you have people, the, the bailing men, they bail the water out of the canoe. But after some time, then I reflected on that, on that journey, that experience. That in a sail, you see different strings, and you have different people that I've always reflected on. Relationships, certain relationships you need to do. Release and certain relationships, you need to strengthen them. And, well, I just want to give an encouragement to the Pacific young people. You know, <clears throat> it's a great opportunity. The world is coming. 56 members coming here. The world is coming to Pacific. Of course, we have challenges. We have digital challenges here. The cost of internet is very high in the region. Travels, it's very super expensive to travel within the Pacific. But with internet, with access to technology, young people are savvy. There are great opportunities out there at the international level, even in your community as well. You have to push yourself in order to reach there. Yeah, and I'm fine always for the Pacific youth and also youth in general across, across the Commonwealth. Another group meeting to Dalanoa are women. The Commonwealth Women's Forum is the highlight of the Chogham Week. And don't tell anyone I said that. It's a chance for women to share their wins and the work still to do. We share common ground as women around the world. We need to work together. Gender-based violence persists. Income inequity, structural discrimination, and restriction of women from leadership opportunities are still a plague in our world. We don't let men do anything else on their own. So why do we let them run the world? I was always being um, stigmatized just because of the person I, I was. Ladies, or transgender women, are also represented at the forum. Malo Elele and Talo Falaba. Uh, my name is Joey Jolene Mataile, and I'm from the Kingdom of Tonga, the only remaining kingdom in the Pacific. <laughs> I wanted to specifically say that. <laughs> Ms. Mataile is the incoming chair of the Commonwealth Equity Network, the first Pacific person elected to the role. 
As the first Pacific person to take up this role, why do you think this is important? I'm still the, the chairperson for the Pacific Sexual Gender Diversity Network, which represents about 15 Pacific Islands. So for me to go from this to 56 countries, it's already giving me lines in my forehead, okay? Not, I mean, it's exciting, it's overwhelming, but at the same time, if I reflect back of what, um, whew, now I'm getting emotional. The priest yesterday mentioned at, at church, you know, your life, if, if you do not respect, if you do not love to have love, and if you do not serve, then your life is no, is, your work is not even useful at all. Some Commonwealth countries that we have worked with have decriminalized and have successfully achieved quite a lot in some of those countries, but there are still more to do. So what do you hope to achieve in this role? We suffer so much because of n not recognizing, and it, it reminds me of the High Chief Tuatangaloa, Joe Anandale. He spoke about existence of third gender the significance of recognizing and upholding their role in society and culture. And we do need to, to recognize that because they are part of the community. They are an asset, you know, and maybe the world can learn from what the Pacific Island can do, eh, have been doing. That the third gender it has been existed from years, ages ago, before Christianity came to the world. Okay? It's best meant to be used for respect, not to criminalize, not to disrespect, not to marginalize and stigmatize everybody else that's different. For goodness sake, we are citizens of this country. We've been able to successfully decriminalize homosexuality law in 12 countries, right? And so we've got six more to go. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that before I get on the wheelchair. <laughs> what are the biggest issues currently facing rainbow communities in the Pacific? We had our president, Polly uh, Kalepo, was, was murdered, brutally murdered. So there are still hate. There are still, even though we accepted the tolerance to acceptance, there's still a lot of work to, do, to be done and understand that these people are citizens of their country. We all pay tax, you know? Why would we do that? And we help try and help the, the, you know, the economy and all that. And then you marginalize us just because we're different. We didn't ask God to be created like this. Hello. We can't help it. Everybody's the same in the eyes of God. We are all created in the image of God, you know. And, but we need to make sure that we do things with a lot of patience, a lot of love, and, um, and spread that love. That's it. Thank you.